Welcome into the third part of our SAT math course where we're going to cover a very specific application of the substitution test trick we talked about in the previous video. So if you've not watched that, please go back and watch that. If you want to learn a little bit more about the resource that I'm teaching off of, you can find that here. But otherwise, let's start talking about equivalent questions in the no calculator section. Now let's talk about a very specific application of the substitution test trick we just covered in chapter two. And so this is really just equivalent questions in the no calculator section. This is a question that appears at least once on over 90% of SATs. So it's something that you have a very high probability of course of seeing on test day. And sometimes we'll even get it more than once. So what these are is you're always gonna basically be asked a question like which of the following expressions is equivalent to the one above. And then often we're gonna get this restriction which is basically telling us for x values that do not equal two, and this is pretty much always gonna be because of undefined values. But because we're saying that these expressions are equivalent to some answer choice, we have a very easy way that we can work around these questions and find the right answer if we are uncomfortable doing it the technically correct way. Now, the big caveat and the big thing we wanna think about with this strategy is this is naturally going to take longer than doing it the technically correct way. If you feel comfortable solving it the technically correct way, absolutely go ahead and do so. But this is something where a lot of students get stuck on test day because they're not comfortable doing polynomial division. They get tripped up by factors. They get tripped up by some weird fraction question. So this is a great thing to basically have in your back pocket which allows you to navigate and find the right answer if you're uncomfortable doing it the technically correct way. Now, what we can do for almost all of these questions is plug x equals one into the original expression and we figure out what value that equals. Then we plug, plug x, equal on, x equals one into each of the answer choices and we're looking for whichever one equals the same thing as our original expression when we plugged one in there. Because we're looking for when they are equivalent, we know if we plug one value into the original expression, if it's equivalent, if we plug the same value into the answer choices, that's gonna tell us that we're looking at the same expression. Now, the other thing we do have to be really careful of, it's very rare to happen, but you could plug one in and you could get multiple answer choices correct. So to be really careful to make sure that we're not gonna get tripped up, we would have to do this for all of the different answer choices. So as I said, this is naturally gonna take a little bit more time, but if you're stuck, you work through all the questions, and you have time to come back and do this, you can absolutely make sure you're picking up an extra question or two in the no calculator section. So we'll kind of walk through this example just to make sure everyone feels really comfortable with this. So here we're told which of the following expressions is equivalent to the one above for x does not equal two. Now, as I said at the front of the video, a lot of times this little statement trips a bunch of students up on test day, you pretty much can just work through the question completely disregarding it. But all we have to think about here is we simply cannot plug two in. The reason you get this statement is because you're creating undefined values. But if you're gonna do this pretty much just the technical way, you don't really have to worry about this. If we're dealing with extraneous solutions, which we'll cover later, this is something we have to consider a little bit more. But all I would do here is simply plug one in for each of my x values, as you can see. So my x squared becomes one squared, minus five x becomes minus five times one, and x minus two becomes one minus two. Now from here, I'm just simplifying, doing my basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and then I get to see what it equals. So I get one minus five plus one, which is going to equal negative three, and then I get one minus two equals negative one, so I have negative three over negative one, and this equals positive three. Now from here, as I said, this is naturally gonna take a little bit of time, but we're very much guaranteed to find the right answer if we do it. I simply plug one into each of the answer choices. And as you can see here in B, we're able to plug one in here, and we see that this also equals three, and our super safe way of checking through is we plug it into the different answer choices, and we see that none of those also equal three. So with B, instead of our X minus three, it becomes one minus three. Instead of five over X minus two, it becomes five over one minus two. And then we're simply simplifying through. So we get one minus three over negative five over negative one. Then we simply get one minus three minus 
multiplied by our negative five, and this all adds up to positive three. None of the other answer choices equal positive three, so we are able to tell that B is our correct answer here. If you are short on time and you find one that works, 90 plus percent of the time, that's gonna be the correct answer. So if you look at it and you feel like one is probably gonna be more likely because of something, some pattern you can pick up or otherwise, you can roll with that if you're really short on time. But as I said, the super safe way of using this method is we do wanna plug them into each of the other answer choices just to make sure we do not have two answer choices that work. Let's say we created two answer choices that work. All I would do is I'd go back through and now I'd plug in a different value. And once you plug in a different value, you're pretty much always immediately gonna figure out which one does match up to our original expression after we've plugged the initial value in and which one doesn't. So if we had two that equaled three here when I plugged one in, I would probably just basically go and I'd plug three in. And then I'd have to go back through my top expression up here, plug three in, see what that expression equals. And then I would plug three into my last two remaining answer choices and see whichever one matched my original expression would show me the correct answer. So as you're going through these, you absolutely can solve some of these the more technical way as you're going through, but definitely practice with this. It's a relatively straightforward test trick. There's nothing super tricky conceptually with it. It's just a great thing to remember on test day, as I said, because oftentimes this can help you get one extra question on the no calculator section or two if we get multiple of these questions that otherwise may have tripped you up for solving it the more technical way.